Hi everyone, this is Lauren Ray and this is Skein 9 of the All Wound Up Podcast. Today is Monday, August 13th, and it's been about three weeks since I last recorded. In the last three weeks, I have done a ton of throwing on the pottery wheel. I've been at the studio almost every day um, working on different projects. I haven't done as much knitting as usual, but um, I also was preparing for a concert. I play the bassoon and at least once a year I play with the West Islip Symphony Orchestra. So I was getting ready for our summer concerts and I really feel like I just had so much creative space being taken up in my head by all the pottery and all the bassoon playing that I just didn't get as much knitting done as I usually do. Um, there isn't another concert until September and then the following one is in November. So I should have more knitting time um, and more creative headspace coming up in the future. I didn't do any counted cross stitch at all in the last three weeks because I just didn't have the drive or the creative thought process. I don't know. Um, so yeah, you can find me on Instagram as lore.romero. That's one of the best places to find me. I have been updating it with lots of pottery pictures. Um, there will be more knitting pictures coming up because I will be doing more knitting. You can also find me on Ravelry as Mistral. Um, that's another really great place to find me. I make sure that I keep a clean inbox, so I can usually notice right away if I have a message um, over on Ravelry. So if you need to get in contact with me for something, that's a good way to do it. We have a Facebook page. Facebook page is All Wound Up Podcasts. I mostly post updates about when um, the podcast is being posted or if I'm having any kind of issue um, with recording or uploading. So that is uh, there as well. Please feel free to like it. You will get updates. I do not spam on that page. It is um, basically just, hey, I recorded the podcast and tried to upload it and now it's not uploading um, or something to that effect is what you would see there. There is also a Ravelry group. You can find that uh, on Ravelry by searching on the group interface for All Wound Up Podcast. I will put a link to both of those things below though. So if you want to find them, you can just click on that link. Uh, in the Ravelry group, we have a summer shawl along happening. Um, you can participate in that shawl along still. It's August 13th, so you have about two weeks until the end of the month. And you can certainly finish a shawl, a smaller shawl or not that involved shawl if you're a slower knitter. And if you're a fast knitter, I've seen people churning out lace shawls in a week and it's driving me crazy because I'm not that fast. Um, you can still enter though. Uh, any shawl, whether you planned it to be for this shawl along or not, that you cast on June 1st or later, as long as it's finished by August 31st, you are more than welcome to enter. There is no yarn requirement except that you use at least 400 yards of whatever yarn you've chosen. So if you're working in worsted weight, 400 yards. Bulky, 400 yards. Fingering, 400 yards. Uh, so you can use any yarn that you want. You can also do any craft you want. So you can knit, you can crochet, you can weave, however you'd like to do it. I suppose if you wanted to try and make a felted shawl, I don't know if that's a thing, but you could do it uh, and it would count for this. So that's there. It is the details are in the Ravelry group and you can certainly still enter. Um, you can double dip those shawls into the Groovy Hues Fibers Summer Shawl Along. I'm co-hosting with Suzanne. Uh, you can find the details for that in her Facebook group, which I will also link below. It is the grooviest of them all, Friends of Groovy Hues Fibers. And then there's a subgroup that you would join for the shawl. But all of the instructions for that are in her um, Facebook group. So that would be a good place to go. Another place you can double dip is in the, hang on. The Girls in the Yarn Cafe, um, they are hosting Those Summer Knits, which is a knit along, crochet along for uh, summer tops or summer shawls or shorts. If you have decided to knit shorts, that's where you can go to enter them in it along. Um, they are, as far as I know, also open to double dipping and why not? Might as well get it in there. Um, any shawl that you make for me, I believe will qualify for them is, as long as it is made in DK weight or lighter. They're really going for lightweight summery items, which is perfect for the summer. Um, yeah, 
so that's that. Um, subscribers. I am currently sitting at 84 subscribers, and I am so happy um, that so many of you have chosen to subscribe to this podcast. Thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, so in 16 followers, 16 subscribers, I am going to host a giveaway, and I've shown this before. I purchased it right after I started podcasting. This is a skein, a full skein of yarn by Yarn Cafe Creations and a coordinating mini skein to go with it. Uh, this was from when she was doing her There's Room for All of Us campaign, uh, which was an anti-bullying campaign. She and her daughter, Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarns, noticed that there's been a lot of bullying in the online fiber community and they don't like it. Uh, so they decided that they were going to do something about it, something small, but something that could make a difference in somebody's life. So they sold different yarn. I believe Tristan had a pattern um, that was released, and the proceeds went to organizations that help fight cyberbullying. So if you win the 100 subscriber giveaway, if I get to 100 subscribers, host the giveaway, and you win, you'll be getting a full skein of Yarn Cafe Creations plus a coordinating mini. There's also a um, stitch marker included in this, a limited release stitch marker, and uh, a little note about the organization that Christy chose to donate to. So that's the prize. I might toss in a couple of other goodies. I haven't decided yet, but that's that. Um, also in the last three weeks, I forgot to mention it, I went to a knit night with Shanna of Lambstrings Yarn and Lauren, her friend, um, I can't remember the name of Lauren's dyeing company, and I'm really sorry. I'm going to message her and ask for it. Her friend Lauren is just starting out dyeing yarn. She's an art teacher, and the info will be down there. So, sorry, I didn't mention that. Um, but yeah, she, I noticed that she and Jamie, Shanna and Jamie, mentioned my podcast on their podcast, Strings and More, last time they did an update and um, I had a jump of subscribers after that. So thank you, uh, Jamie and Shanna for mentioning me. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So we will have a giveaway soon, hopefully. Uh, in addition to the giveaway for the summer shawl along, hopefully a hundred subscriber giveaway happens. Okay. Finished objects. I put these down in my notes as a mostly finished object when I did my notes last night. And then I said, wow, Lauren Ray, you're being lazy. So I made myself sit down and weave in the ends and also to, um, also to, and also do the uh, French darning that the designer calls for on the pattern. So these, why can't I hold my hand straight? These are the Night Creatures Mittens. They are by Adrian Basilia and they are knit out of Lambstrings Utopia Sport yarn in the Voodoo colorway and the Spellbound colorway. The Voodoo is the dark, the Spellbound is the light. Voodoo is a deep, rich tonal purple. It is a very, very dark purple. Uh, and Spellbound is sort of a lavender gray, which is like such a Shanna color. Uh, it's a lavender gray with dark purple, blue, orange, and brown speckles. And they really complement each other very nicely for these mittens. So um, the mittens feature a rat or mouse, a, an owl, a bat, and a haunted, oops, and a haunted tree. Um, they are incredibly comfortable. I love them. I knit a size extra large, and I used size five needles to do that. So the way you determine sizing for this project is you take a gauge swatch and your gauge swatch is the mitten itself. So <clears throat> if you wanna knit the small, you use a two, medium is a three, large is a four, extra large is a five. I could have blocked these more aggressively, but the person that they're for said that even though she wanted oversized mittens, she wears a medium sized glove. I also wear a medium sized glove. So I didn't wanna block them too aggressively. I think that you could fit um, thin gloves underneath, but we'll see. So this is them. And I'm absolutely in love with them. Um, I don't like to do magic loop and I do not like to use double pointed needles. So I knit them on two circulars 
They were Chowgu Red Lace size fives. Um, and I did one mitten and then the other. I did not knit them tandem like I do my socks, <clears throat> but um, I definitely enjoyed doing them. The yarn. Um, I have about 75 grams of each color left. I only used about a quarter of each skein to do these mittens. So I have plenty left over for another project. Um, I will probably pair Spellbound with another yarn that I'll show during acquisitions. I'm not sure if I showed it before, but I'm going to show it again if I did. Um, with another yarn of Shanna's that I will pair with this um, that I think will look really nice. And I'll still probably have half a skein of this and three quarters of a skein of the purple and the blue left. So I might be able to make a shawl or something out of those. Um, I was really surprised at how little yarn it used. I thought it would use much more. I feel like the pattern description said it would use much more. Whatever. I'm happy. I have a lot of leftovers. I love leftovers. So <clears throat> that's that. Um, I want now to knit all of the color work things, especially color work mittens. I have been forcing myself to finish some whips um, before I cast any more on, but I didn't do that much knitting, so no whips are finished and no more mitts are cast on. But soon. Soon they will be. So also in my finished objects, this is tangentially related to knitting because they're yarn balls. I have finished, I have five of them here. There are a couple more at the studio waiting um, both for glaze firing and to get out of the bisque kiln. So for anybody who doesn't know, when you are working in ceramics, you fire it first to get it into a nice hard non-clay state. Um, and then it's kind of, it looks like the bottom of a pot. So like this, looks like that. Um, and then you can apply glaze to it and do another firing. So that's what's going on. Um, so yeah, I have five yarn bowls to show you. I have several people who are going to be testing them for me because um, I want to make sure that they are to my liking and to their liking. So this is for uh, Sam. This is a turquoise and a white glaze combo. Definitely enjoying it. Um, this one is my favorite out of all the ones that I've made so far. So um, there's that. That's one. This one is for Thad of Archaeology Knits. Uh, it's a purple and green glazed together, actually. Um, yeah, so this this yellowy color is what the green looks like if you do just one coat. Um, but when you combine it with the purple, it does this like cool iridescent dragon wing kind of thing, uh, dragonfly wing kind of thing, and I definitely enjoy that. Um, yeah, so those that one's Thad's. Suzanne's is still in the kiln. Suzanne of Groovy Hughes will be getting one. Uh, this is for Krista. Uh, she's going to test it out for me as well. The outside is purple. The inside is purple and blue together. It is, these are of second quality, sorry. Um, and there's a glaze splotch right here where I did not cover the blue with purple, but that's okay. Um, Cause like I said, it's of second quality. Um, yeah, so that's purple on the inside. Then I have another turquoise and white. Where the turquoise glaze breaks or um, is thinner, it turns into this beautiful coppery orange color. So that's cool. Another yarn bowl. Um, I do like to make the bottoms quite heavy. So if you're sitting it on something, it doesn't tip right over. This one is a blue and white glaze combo. I think it looks like um, the Japanese indigo dyeing um, technique. I think it's called chibori. I'm going to be um, trying to do some more with this glaze combo and um, doing it in a more uh, uniform way so that the color really gets shown off. But I quite like this one too. It's my second favorite. Um, so I will be having more of these and eventually I hope to be selling them. So, darn bulls. It's my other finished objects. At least I've been productive in the studio, right? Haven't been knitting that much, but I've been productive. So that's good. All right, whips. I don't have any mushy clay here to show you what's going on in the studio, but I do have plenty of knitting. So I'm only going to show the three whips that I've actively worked on in the last few weeks, but that's still plenty. 
I think. Uh, so this is housed in a an utterly adorable knits large drawstring bag. Uh, she's got her tag on the outside. Her shop updates are generally Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. So, um, yeah. This is the I Want That Wrap by Carolyn Kinghorn. I talked about this last time I podcasted. It is a poncho, and it will be for a friend who was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer at the age of 29. So I feel like she really needs a chemo wrap. Um, I'm about... I'm almost... I'm almost halfway through. I'm like a third through. A little bit more than a third. I was at the stitch marker the last time I podcasted. Um, so that's a Jelly Donut Stitch Marker Progress Keeper by Andisa Charms. Uh, it's got... Where'd it go? It's got sparkly uh, sugar grains on it and jelly coming out of both sides because it is an overstuffed jelly donut, which I like. The yarn that I'm using is Barocco Comfort Chunky which is um, all man-made fibers. It is whoop, super fine nylon and super fine acrylic uh, in a blend. It is very soft and it has excellent stitch definition. If you are looking for a synthetic yarn to use, I would highly recommend this. It comes in DK worsted. No, I think it, yeah, I think it comes in DK and worsted. The DK is very light. Um, so it's almost like a sport weight, but I enjoy this. Uh, the person who will be receiving this is a vegan, uh, so that's why I'm going with this yarn instead of a wool blend. Uh, typically when I knit I Want That Wrap, I use a wool and silk blend from Dirty Water Dye Works. I usually use one Edna Extra skein. I do have one skein of that here. This is um, Edna Extra, which is a DK Silk and Polworth blend. I believe it's 8515 Polworth and Silk, but this is what I usually use when I make this poncho. So the yarn that I'm using is a little bit thicker, um, but it's also synthetic. When I block this, I block it a little bit aggressively. I knew that this would be whatever size it is because it's synthetic. Um, so it is what it is. I'm using Knitter's Pride Dreams, my interchangeable set. I have a size 11 and I'm on a 32 inch cable. Um, it's plenty. Uh, because of the way the poncho is knit, there's lots of room on the cable because um, it's knit side to side instead of, or no, it's, well, it's knit the hamburger way instead of the hot dog way. Uh, so that makes it easy. Uh, yeah, hamburger way and hot dog way. So when I just tried to show the hamburger and hot dog way folding a piece of paper, I totally showed off a pattern. Can't do that, have to edit that. But this is the hamburger way. And this is the hot dog way. Mrs. Slang taught us that in first grade. So that's how I remember folding things. But the shawl, the poncho, is knit the hamburger way and not the hot dog way. I know I'm crazy. It's okay. Uh, anyway, my second work in progress is my on-the-go project, which is also living in that utterly adorable knits bag sometimes, and in this little tiny bag that my friend Ivy brought me back from one of her trips to Taiwan. She's currently living in Taiwan, uh, so it's not really a trip right now, but she brings these things back. This is a teeny tiny bag, teeny tiny drawstring bag, and it holds one sock. It's perfect for one sock if, and only if, you are using a half ball of yarn, which I am. So this is uh, the Cozy Knitter Bliss in the Heartbreaker colorway. It is a self-striping yarn. Um, I am enjoying it immensely. It's the second time I've knit with this. I knit a pair of Christmas socks out of her Gingerbread House colorway last year. Um, they're my only socks that I've kept for myself, so my plan is to keep these as well, but um, I'm not sure. So these are being knit, hang on, I have the other sock in the bag that the poncho was living in. It shares space. These are being knit in tandem. So I knit the one leg, and now I'm knitting the second leg, then I'll knit the heel, the heel, the foot, the foot, and then the toes. Um, they're being knit in tandem. I love how the stripes are working out 
I think they're nice, cute, muted socks. I'm definitely enjoying them. Um, I'm trying for the first time the nine inch circulars. I'm using size one. I had been using size twos for my socks and I didn't quite like my gauge, so I decided to switch down. Um, and I was told that when people knit with these tiny circulars, they tend to have a looser gauge. I'm not sure if these are going to um, work out for me. I may have to give them to my mom. Um, she has teeny tiny little legs. <laughs> so if they don't fit me, they will certainly fit her. However, she has a pair of socks that I knit her for Christmas that she hasn't worn yet. It's August, so I decided that my new rule for my mom, and I told her this when I gave them to her, is if you don't wear them within a year, I'm taking them, because then I can wear the Beauty and the Beast socks that I made her she can wear these or not wear them for a year and then I'll take them back yeah um my mom is afraid that she's going to ruin things I made her a taze it's, it's called a prayer shawl it's really it's a lace scarf I made her a taze prayer shawl um by Susan Pandorf it was one of my first lace projects it was not a simple lace project and she hasn't worn it I made her a shawl out of Groovy Hue's yarn. She hasn't worn it. She does wear hats that I make her, though. So, Mom, I'm guilting you right now. She watches this. Maybe she won't after this. Wear the socks. They're not going to get ruined. And if they do, I'll knit another pair. It might take me a year <laughs> at the rate I knit socks. But I'll knit another pair. I promise. So, socks in tandem on nine inch circulars. They're a size one, like I said. So I'm not sure how I like it. I think I might need a one and a half to really get the nice gauge that I want. We'll see um, after I've washed these and tried them on. They could work out. So my next whip that I worked on, and I worked on this a lot when I was knitting with Helen at Starbucks here in the Bronx, um, still doesn't look like much. This is the 003 Camisole by Veronica Job. It's living in a uh, slip stitch studio bag with nesting dolls on it. Here it is. Um, the last time I podcasted, I was down here at the grilled cheese sandwich. The grilled cheese sandwich is made by... Where is it? The grilled cheese sandwich is made by Pitter Patter Polymer. Uh, it's a polymer clay charm and it is my progress keeper for this project. I have to decrease, I think I'm on the seventh set of decreases. No, I'm about to start the eighth set of decreases and I have to do 17 of them. I feel like this is never going to be finished, but when it is finished, I'm going to love it and wear it a lot. So hopefully I do finish it. Right now it's just stockinette with a decrease every certain number of rows, that's it. Um, four decreases every certain number of rows but I have to do that 10 more times <laughs> uh, so this is seven decreases and I have to do 10 more it's a lot it is an a-line camisole so I think it'll be really um, comfy and loose and flowy to wear the yarn is Debbie Bliss pure silk so it's a hundred percent silk uh, supposedly it's a DK weight I've talked about my gauge struggles with this before but uh, I'm using it as I would use fingering this is a stitch marker. Whoop. Pitter patter polymer is getting in the way. Um, this is a stitch marker by Ridiculously Cute. Uh, it's got green seed pearls and it says wish on it. Uh, it was a gift from a swap last year and I wanted to use it with this project because it matches perfectly. I'm also knitting this on Chow Gu Red Lace Needles. They're a size two and they are a 32 inch cord, I believe. I have the package right here. They are a 32 inch cord. Um, so hopefully I finish that by next summer because I don't think I'm gonna have it done for this summer. Um, we'll see though, hopefully. It would be nice if I did. <sighs> don't know though. So. Most of my whips right now are on Chow Goo's or my signatures. For a long time, um, these were my go-to needles. These are my Knitter's Pride Dreams. Um, 
I have the interchangeable set. I also have the shorty interchangeable set. Um, and I bought the supplementary tips for sizes 13 through 19. For a long time, these were really my go-to needles. I love them. I do still love them. Um, I've just been enjoying metal tips more lately. I used to really like wood. I used to swear I would not um, use anything other than wood, but now I, I've really been liking the metal. This was my first ever set of interchangeables, though. I might sell or gift this. This is the uh, Clover Bamboo interchangeable set. Um, I like them. I do still enjoy bamboo needles for some projects. They just come unscrewed, this set. I find I'm constantly having to rescrew it. Um, there's no place to insert a pin. There's no real mechanism for keeping them attached. But most of my projects right now are on chow goose. Uh, I'm loving the cables. I thought I wouldn't like them. I thought I liked plastic. And then when I tried that rubber coated or plastic coated, whatever it is, steel, I fell in love. Um, they are awesome and they don't kink ever. Um, even my signature needle cords kink. The chowboos don't. So uh, they're a favorite right now. Anyway, acquisitions. I'll just switch pages. Um, all right, so I have a decent amount of acquisitions. Not not a ton, but a decent amount. Um, so this is the yarn I was talking about earlier. This is Lambstring's Utopia Sport. It is in the Midnight Hour color. I may pair that with Spellbound to make myself a pair of color work mitts. I haven't decided. And then the leftovers may eventually become a shawl. Not sure. I haven't decided. But since I have three quarters of a skein left of each of these, I definitely have to make some more stuff. So I will make myself mittens out of these colors. I have a pattern in mind. I don't remember what it's called, but they will be mittens eventually. Put the balls in the yarn bowls. Okay, so that's that. Um, I've had that yarn since I bought the yarn for the mittens. I just don't remember if I showed it. So I'm showing it now. <clears throat> All right, my next acquisition has been sitting here waiting for me to finally show it. Um, it is from Dandelions and Daisies. And this was Cherish, the dyer's special birthday kit that she made for herself. So I'll show the yarn first, but there is other stuff in here. So this is a full skein and three 92 yard minis. Um, it is the Wild Rose set, she calls it. So these are colors that I absolutely love. There's pink and green and tan blended in with the natural yarn. It's got some nice speckles on it. They're like a deep green. Um, and then the three minis are just super pretty. I don't know what I'm going to make with this yet. There is a pattern included, but I'm not sure but that's going to be my choice. I did not buy the kit for the pattern. I just bought it because I love these yarns. So this is the Wild Rose set by Dandelions and Daisies. I received a skein of Dandelions and Daisies in my swap package from Heidi. But there's that. I love these colors and I cannot wait to use them but I have to wait to use them, so I set them aside. Also included in the box is, like I said, a shawl pattern. This is the Sweet Briar Shawl. It's by Sheila Joy Stromberg. Um, like I said, I didn't buy the kit for the shawl pattern, but I may eventually make the shawl pattern. I haven't decided. I know I don't think I want to make it out of these yarns. Sorry. Um, but I will make it eventually, probably, possibly. Yeah. So I have the pattern. It's a very nice pattern. Uh, it's well written. It includes both written instructions and charts. Uh, I like the formatting on it. That's always important to me. If I don't like the formatting of a pattern, especially a free pattern, I'm not going to knit it. Um, it bothers me. I don't know why. It's just me. Um, Actually, no, it does have 
No, it just has charts, actually. I lied. Um, but I don't... I like to have patterns that have formats that are visually pleasing and that are something that I like to look at because if I'm going to knit something, I want to look at... It takes me a while. I want to look at something nice. Um, I also... To me, it's also... I usually knit off my phone screen. That's where I usually have my patterns displayed, so it's also important to me the formatting in that regard, um, that it's easy to line up when I zoom in on it in my iBooks app, which is what I use for my patterns most of the time. Oh, yarn, the shawl pattern. Then there is also, hang on, it's backwards, a wild rose stitch marker made by Jen Antillini of Ridiculously Cute. It is, oop, it is beaded has a rose bead for the girl. for the flower part, individual beads on the stem and separate beads for each leaf. I do like it. I haven't used it yet. It's in here waiting to be shown off on the podcast so I can finally break into that and use it. Um, a nice touch that Cherish has. I don't know if she stamps this herself or if she buys it, but look. Her yarn has her logo, her, uh, sorry, her tissue paper has her logo on it, which I think is really cool. I've never seen that before. I've never gotten yarn from a dyer that has custom tissue paper. So just the one sheet was like that, the other sheet was plain, but I think it's a nice touch. The final object that is included in here um, is a, sorry about the crackling. Oh, she wraps them in paper. That's nice. Is a smudge stick from Paradigm. It's got sage, sage, and rose petals. Um, it smells really pretty. So I'm probably, I've never smudged anything. I will probably use it as like a sachet um, to make a drawer smell nice or possibly put it in with some yarn make the, the yarn smell nice since it's for me. Um, yeah, I quite like the smell of that. So that's that. All right. One more acquisition to show. So a couple of podcasts ago, I showed off when I had cast on Ides, I showed off the uh, start of a shawl by Archaeology Knits. It does not, to my knowledge, have a name yet. I'm testing this shawl and I will then be giving it as a gift to, um, which way are they? To Trish of Timid Monsters. I need to move my Attenti bag or move my monsters. Uh, there's some Timid Monsters right there. I'll move my Attenti bag next time so that they're being shown off the whole time. Um, I'll move it right now. So she makes Timid Monsters. I have gotten many monsters from her over the years. I love them. Um, they're all over my apartment. There's one right behind the camera, too. Um, I do enjoy them. She made me a photo set um, with different emotions of a monster that she named after my World of Warcraft character. Actually, she named it also after my Ravelry account without knowing it. Um, and then I lost them. Horribly. I put them on the roof of my car and scattered them on Portion Road out in Ronkonkoma. And was not able to recover them. So she is making me a new set and I am making her in exchange and as a thank you for all the freebie monsters I've gotten over the years um, and discounts when I should not have had a discount. Um, a shawl and I'm going to make her dad's shawl that I'm test knitting. So this is all the light that trickles down into my giant yellow eye on cuddly and groove and sock and Suzanne dyed for me a colorway also on um, Cuddly and Groove and Sock called Not Too Yellow because um, Trish and I discussed what color she would like. Uh, we were thinking maybe brown, maybe dark teal, or yellow. Um, initially, Suzanne was like, oh, there's some neon yellow, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, mm. I brought that up to Trish and she was like, so I went back to Suzanne and I said, could you make me something that's not too yellow? So not too yellow on Cuddly and Groove and Sock is my next acquisition. I will be winding this up 
and continuing to knit on Thad's design. It is a test knit. I do not know what it is called. It has short rows and it is a um, an irregular crescent shaped shawl, but there's that. Groovy hues, fibers, cuddly and groovin, sock weight. In not too yellow. So that will be joining the uh, teal green in that shawl and it will be striped and it will be very pretty. Um, I think it almost resembles like the older Japanese flag that has the sunbeams on it. I'm not sure. I don't even know if that is the, the older Japanese flag or if that's, I don't know. But um, that's what I think it resembles. I really like it. Um, yeah, so I'll be knitting that up. I do first have to prioritize finishing this I want that wrap poncho because um, I know that the woman that it's for just had her second chemo treatment and I want her to be able to wear this during chemo. Um, so she has 12 more weeks of every other week and then 12 weeks of every week. So I do still have time to finish it for her, but I need to pick up the pace. <clears throat> so that's that. That is all I have to share with you for now. Um, Hopefully next time I record, I will have more knitting content for you. I do um, plan to show off more ceramic stuff. So if you could, please let me know in the comments. Um, would you prefer that I do a separate, at the end, finished object segment about the um, pottery ceramic stuff that I've thrown? Or should I continue doing it with the regular finished objects? I think if I do it at the end, then people who are not interested in hearing about the pottery that I'm throwing, the ceramics that I'm making, can tune out. Um, they can still watch the knitting portion of the podcast, but they can tune it out at the end. Um, when they're knitting related like yarn bowls, I feel like it connects with the finished objects. But if I start to share like, you know, a serving bowl or a vase, I don't know that that's going to have the same effect. I don't know that I can really connect it as much. So please let me know down there in the comments um, what you think I should do going forward. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> if you liked this video, please like it. If you like what you see overall, please uh, subscribe to my channel on YouTube by hitting that subscribe button down there. If 16 more people subscribe, then I'm gonna do a giveaway for that 100 subscriber, 100 subscriber milestone. Whew. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. See you guys in two or three weeks, and that's it. Bye.